Hello and welcome to the B and B show. I'm Andy Blaylock. And I'm thankful, thankful, thankful. We are thankful. I'm gonna give you a handful of thankful. I'm thankful. You're thankful. Let's just all be thankful. You and like my they, shirt? And they, <laughs> and they clicked it out. <laughs> you just ensure that no one's gonna watch this video. Oh, now we can, we can talk about anything we want. Say what <laughs> we want. I'm on brand today. See, I got the colors. The Thanksgiving colors. The Thanksgiving drink. Kevin, is this glass half empty or half full? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't, I wouldn't drink after. I think it's half you, full. Hmm. I think it's not full enough. I want more. I want more. Who cares? No, no big, big deal. deal. I, I want, want more. more. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. This is the problem with this show. They clicked off Hello, again. Hello. How are you? We hope you're having a wonderful day. Why do you ask day. them how they are? They can't answer us. Oh, well, they could do comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One guy commented, "Go FSU." That's why I'm wearing this today. Oh, is that what? Yeah. Oh, did they really? They said, yeah. "Go FSU." Yeah. And so you're wearing that. Yeah. So to you, random commenter, I think I know who that is. Yeah. A certain beautiful, white-haired gentleman. Square pants. With, with, with squ <laughs> SpongeBob square pants? Oh, that's on our show. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love you. We know who you are. Name <laughs> rhymes with. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we talking about We're today? We're talking about. Now, sometimes we, uh, we don't always want to be on brand for the season. You yeah. know, so like. When it's Christmas time, well, we're going to speak on Christmas because sometimes people are like, yeah, yeah, we get it. Yeah. But this is very important, I think. I, yeah, I agree. I, yeah, we, were I, we were talking about this before. We were underrated. Before show. Very underrated. Probably one of the most underrated subjects ever. And the problem is you're thinking, okay, it's Thanksgiving season, right? It's talk, we We're talking about gluttony. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the gluttoners and wine bibbers shall lie together. Um, people kind of turn their mind off, right? Like, yeah, uh -huh. okay, I get it. Be thankful to God. We get it. Andy and Kevin, we get it. No, but we kind of want to go deeper than that. Yeah. I, I don't think people truly understand this subject. Right. When it comes to Thanksgiving, when it comes to gratitude, I'm going to have you start off. I'm probably one of the greatest verses on it. So Romans chapter 1 and verse number 20, the Bible says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, yeah. so that they are without excuse. This is talking about people who have been given up to a reprobate mind. Yes. And here he goes. This is why. Because that when they knew God, in other words, creation, conscience, you know, these different yeah. things. They that did know him. They, they did him. know him. But here is where he gets to. The Lord says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And then it says these three words, neither were thankful yeah. but became vain or empty in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. And that happened. Yeah. They weren't thankful. Yeah, it all starts with that. Um, I think we all, yes, our listeners, but us as well, need to reconfigure our minds or challenge ourselves about this notion of thanksgiving. It's not simply looking to God and saying thanks mm -hmm. or I'm grateful for this food. Or for this drink, I am. or for my family, yeah. or for th that is completely surface level. Mm -hmm. It goes far deeper than that. Yeah, gratitude is, or I should say, like you just read a moment ago, ingratitude. I believe actually is the original sin. You know, you say it's pride, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, what Satan did is he had everything he could ever want. He was this Lucifer was the second most powerful being in the whole universe. Right. He was given all authority by God, basically, mm -hmm. and rule of music. And he looked around, and what did he say? It's not, not enough. enough. It's not enough, right? Don't and really, care Adam and Eve. How I, I want, want it now. now. <laughs> That's a good point. So Willy Wonka, one kid was a glutton, yeah, right? A, a Gustus uh, Glue, yeah, they or were no, gloop, uh, gloop. Yeah. Um, One kid was a narcissist. One was addicted to media and self. They're all selfish, it's right? Ahead of its time, yeah. <laughs> but the most reprehensible character, most people would agree. Baruka, sweetheart. Baruka, sweetheart. What business you in? Nuts. But the reason why in that narrative it resonated so strongly with people isn't wasn't because she was a glutton, wasn't because she was selfish, just selfish. It's because she was so ungrateful. Yeah. She was so, it, nothing was ever enough. Right. And he wanted, she wanted more and she wanted it now. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. And in the heart of man, even lost people, that resonated so strongly because there's nothing more odious. Mm -hmm. And more dangerous. All those kids were bad, but the most dangerous kid was Baruka mm -hmm. because she was ungrateful. And you think about the garden. Again, it wasn't pride. And yeah, I said this fruit will make thee wise and good mm -hmm. and evil. But the problem was God gave them everything uh -huh. except for this one thing. And Satan knew that and 
chimed on that one little itch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yea, if God said. You, he's given you all this, but don't you want that one little thing? It's, it's the first question mark in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 3, yea, hath God said, mm -hmm. question mark. God is a God of periods and exclamation points. Thank you, yeah. Brother Polly, yeah. for that. Uh, um, <laughs> yep. But uh, uh, it's true. God say, of every, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Yeah. That means you have all this stuff. Yeah, he's not even stingy. God wasn't yeah. even stingy with his blood. It's like, you can eat this once a week. Yeah. You can have it. No, you can eat and eat and have your full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're stuffed you to the gills. All you can eat buffet. Eat it all. Yeah. yeah. Except for this one thing. And, and that's, again, being ungrateful make us, makes us focus on the thing that we don't have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it is a just a dangerous place to live when you're ungrateful and when you're unthankful. Yeah, and, and like Brother Kevin read, that's where everything else comes from. There's mm -hmm. a reason Romans 1, it's I mean, they talk about the unseemly things they do with their bodies, the things they do with their mouths, mm -hmm. the things they do with their lives, and it leads to death. But all of that is predicated by neither were thankful. By the way, if you're dealing with atheists out there, or if you yourself are a doubter or a denier of God, it's interesting Romans says they knew God. Mm -hmm. And I've used that before. I've talked to, well, I don't believe in God. It's like, you may not, but you do know him. Mm -hmm. What do you mean I know him? Because he's written in your heart. Right. Everyone knows God. Everyone knows of God, mm -hmm. but they have to choose whether to respond in gratitude right. and recognition to him. Mm -hmm. And then all the other horrible things that we see in our country, in the world, comes from a world that just does not recognize or give thanks to God. That's true. I mean, what a we, we do it's, live in an ungrateful society, we for do. sure. And here's the thought that we really want to... Th this isn't like three points in a poem or anything, mm -hmm. but... I Although I have, have three, I have have four points. points. Oh. Well, I can well, make a poem off the cuff here. Let's start with your points. Well, I love to go to the verse in First Thessalonians chapter five. In everything, give thanks. Everything, yep. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yeah. And that gives a connotation that thankfulness is not something that we do, but it's rather a, a, a product of who we are. Yeah, amen. So you know, you're just a grateful person. You have so much to be thankful for, and so it affects everything in our life. Let me give you a couple of practical points here. I think thankfulness should permeate, first of all, our prayers. Yes. Y you know, so many times, I, I know I'm not the only one, but so many times I'll rush into a prayer, I pray for this, that thing, and the other thing, and I need this, yeah. and be with all the missionaries, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but when you think about it, when the disciples ask Jesus, teach us to pray, well, the, the prayers are filled with praise and worship to God and thanksgiving. Yeah. And I'm going to challenge you uh, today, and when you're watching this, and when you're having your own prayer time, let Thanksgiving permeate your prayers. Yeah. In everything, give thanks. You know, yeah. Dr. Sexton across the state here, he lost his house to the hurricane. Mm. And one of the first things he talked about was this verse, in everything. He goes, well, well we're in the everything right now. Yeah, that's good. And what a great outlook. That doesn't just happen. Yeah. He's cultivated a, a, a personality and an inner man of just gratitude. So I, I think it would change your prayer life if you, you just enter in thankful. We love to talk about everything else in our prayers. Oh, this person said this about me. Lord, help me. Or, yeah. you know, But the God says, in everything, give thanks in our prayers. Okay, And then in our practices, you, you know, give thanks in your practices. And in a practical way, it'll affect how you live your life. If you're not always looking to get the next best thing, yeah. you're not looking to get the next best relationship, you're not looking to get the next best whatever it is that's coming out. Uh, but God says you can be content, you can be thankful, mm -hmm. you can have enough, you can be satisfied and grateful and thankful. And that it permeates your practices, it permeates your prayers, yeah. be, because it, it's a per it becomes who you are. It can permeate your proclamation. That was the other point I didn't Ooh, write down. That's a good one. You, you know, it's good to talk about the blessings of God. Yeah, audibly <clears throat> share them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was I was going through doom scrolling, as you say. <laughs> yep. You know, people yep. love to talk about the current climate of the Did government. Did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Yeah. Uh, um, but having a person that is in, in everything giving thanks, it permeates their prayers, their pra uh, practices, their proclamations. They talk about the blessings of God. You know yeah. what? Uh, yeah. We have the kids that we pick up on Sundays and Wednesdays. Miss Maddie, my wife, she, she'll go ahead and uh, pick up these girls. And one of the first things... And it doesn't matter how bad our attitude might be no. or how bad their attitude might be, because let's just focus, uh, uh, be real here, sometimes we're not having a good day. No, you know, we and, don't feel particularly great. Yeah, 
But what we do almost every time um, our van riders get in the van, all right, five things you're thankful for. This is amazing to me. It changes the attitude of everybody in the van. Mm. And, and just talking about the goodness and, and how yeah. God has, has done this, it is it is something that should permeate our lives. Thankfulness in our prayers, thankfulness in our practices, thankfulness in our proclamation or our preaching, and, and that's because it is a priority. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Oh, land in the plane, all right? Yeah. Um, but in everything, give thanks. That is because that's a, it's, it's who you are. It's not just something that we do you know, once a year or uh, we have the 30 days of thankfulness in November. You know? And then we're never thankful again. Yeah, exactly. We should be thankful all the time in everything. Give thanks, and, and so that—that's my okay. two cents. And on you know, that. you made a good point too, Kevin. About I make one um, more proclamation. You, you, nothing humbles you more, or puts you in your spiritual place than when you're talking to a brother or sister in Christ, and they're seventy, eighty, ninety years old, and their body is in acute, terrible pain. Mm -hmm. They're battling cancer. And they look at you and they just repeat how thankful they are for God's blessings. Mm -hmm. And you're like, <laughs> right? Yeah, here I am. I'm playing my video my game and the power flickered and turned the game off right in the middle of a good round, you know? <laughs> and I'm so upset. And then, you know, you've got a dear sister in Christ who lost her husband and she's battling cancer on her own and misses her family and she's alone. And she just has the bright, shining face of gratitude mm -hmm. and thankfulness. I think, think about your Aunt Lori when, you know, yeah. she, she was just a thankful, full of faith lady. Constantly. Had and, the worst diagnosis. Yeah. Stage four, and she just was thankful for God's provision. I, I think she's the epitome of the verse, you know, in everything give thanks. And Amen. she was a thankful lady. That's another good point you made. You know, most of the verses you read about Thanksgiving in the New Testament were written by the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And most of the time that he mentioned giving thanks was when he was in prison. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that is that is in everything. It's the jailhouse of joy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. the college of contentment, you know. he And he said, I've learned mm -hmm. in whatsoever state I am. And this is, it's a process. We're not naturally grateful people. Right. We're naturally the Israelites, mm -hmm. always complaining about something. It's addictive. I mean, psychologists have revealed that it's cathartic to complain. Mm -hmm. But what we don't understand, it's also destructive and yeah. it's carnal. And mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be part of our new nature. Here's another point. I'm sorry. No, it's go ahead. all about, remember we talked about your thankfulness in your prayers, yeah. thankfulness in your practices, thankfulness in your Proclamation. proclamations, because it should be a priority, but it all comes from a, the right perspective. Ooh. Boom, shakalaka. Yeah, Ali. And in the right person. Oh, uh, and in the right person. You're, we're getting right. dunked on today, yeah, man. On ourselves? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that possible? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Every, everything, yeah. Everything begins with perspective. Yeah. Everything. Again, it was, it was Lucifer's perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, he looked around, well, I, I deserve to be as the most high. It was Adam and Eve's perspective. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being cheated. That's, that's not fair to me. But here's the thing, too, and I want to try to leave you with this thought, if I may. If you don't have a heart of gratitude to God, mm -hmm. thanksgiving, then you cannot receive the instruction from God. You cannot receive his will. Mm -hmm. You cannot receive his blessings. People have God's blessings uh -huh. all around them. The lost do, too. The lost enjoy God's blessings, but they don't receive them. Mm -hmm. When you are not grateful, like it says here in Romans 1, there's a degradation there. There's a series of events. Mm -hmm. If you're not grateful, then you don't see God's blessings, mm -hmm. right? But you also don't hear his word because mm -hmm. you don't listen. I'm sorry, but if you're in church and you have an ungrateful heart, you're not listening. Even if you're trying to, you're saying, like, well, I'm sitting in church and I listen. If you're if you have a heart of bitterness and ingratitude to God, he's not talking to you. Mm -hmm. And you're not, and even if he was, you're not hearing him. Right. It, I don't make the rules. The Lord does. It's in his word. You don't see his blessings, you don't hear his word, and you don't feel his love. Mm -hmm. Ingratitude basically creates spiritual blindness and deafness. Right. And so, you know, sometimes you have a phone. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, man, I don't have reception, right? I got two bars. I got one bar. Why does it say I have 5G and two bars and I can't download this YouTube video? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that right. happens all the time. All the time. <laughs> but there's no reception. If you don't have a heart filled with thanksgiving, then you have no spiritual reception. Mm -hmm. You don't. You cannot receive on high the things God has for you. Because I've noticed in my life, if harboring and gratitude or bitterness, it just seems like everything else I do is tainted. Mm -hmm. When I try to minister to others... When I try to read his word or pray, it's right. just you're just stifled. Right. You're you're handicapped, you're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't bless someone simply who doesn't have gratitude for them. 
It's, yeah. it's that simple. I think you know, <clears throat> back in Numbers chapter 13, you know, where Moses sends out these 12 spies into the land, yeah. not to see if they can capture the land, but to see how. Right. You know, that's an important uh, um, thing to note there. Yeah. Uh, but you had 10 guys that come back, well, it's too hard. They are, you, we are ants. We're, it's ants we're like grasshoppers, grasshoppers and, and these eyes. guys are the fortified walls and things like that. I, I think they'd forgotten Mm-hmm. What God had already done, they'd seen God do miraculous works, and because Constantly. in part of their ungratefulness, a trip that should have taken no more than eleven days. Did you know yeah. this? Yeah, eleven days Crazy. from Egypt to the Promised Land took forty years, and it stemmed from unbelief mostly, yeah. and also un- ungratefulness. They forgotten what God had could already do. Yeah, and, and uh, but then you had these two guys, Joshua, yeah, and Caleb. And these are guys that remembered how God's hand provided. And, and you know, it would do us mind just to take inventory perspective <laughs> <laughs> and, and to think about these things. While their ungratefulness for these 10 spies, it kind of hampered, you know, what God was doing in, in the children of Israel. And, and that happens to us. Like you're, you're saying, yeah, when I'm it, ungrateful or unthankful, it, it hampers my ability to minister to other people as well. And, and for God to minister to you. Mm-hmm. And I heard one preacher say it this way. God was ready in 11 days to give them everything that they could ever want. Mm -hmm. But it took them 40 years to learn to be thankful for it. 40 years. Uh, But isn't that true of all mankind? Isn't that true of all of us? We might like, oh, those ungrateful Jews. (laughs) Yeah. But that's how long it took Mm -hmm. for them to learn the lesson. The way the preacher said it is that it took them, instead of 11 days, it took them 40 years to learn the words, thank you. Wow. <laughs> right? That is... Like, that is Chill bumps, rough. chill bumps, chill bumps. And he said, <laughs> from a generation of slaves. They, sh- they said they should have learned those two words on day one. Mm-hmm. It took 40 years. And it's because, again, it's unnatural. Satan, more than anything, yeah. wants to fill you with ingratitude because it insults God. It hurts his heart. It shakes your fist at him. It's a form of rebellion. Mm-hmm. And Satan's the same way. Right. And he wants to foster... That was his original spirit. Mm-hmm. And he wants to funnel that spirit both in our nation. I mean, look at the election season. It's all ingratitude. Mm-hmm. Even if things, we're so blessed, but there's always something to complain about. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, when I look at King Saul, you know, King Saul was very blessed. David loved him. Mm-hmm. He would have died for him. He had a son-in-law unlike any other. Mm-hmm. And I think that if Saul truly mentored and blessed David, that God would have blessed him too. Mm-hmm. But because David was so bitter and so, and so hard-hearted and so ungrateful mm-hmm. for all the Lord has done, he was chucking spears at his blessings. Yes. It's like Pastor said, loathing your blessings, mm-hmm. you know, and he loathed the blessings. So God couldn't speak to Saul. Mm-hmm. He couldn't move in Saul, and he instead moved in David, who was always grateful. Even mm-hmm. when spears were being chucked at him and he's hiding in caves for his life, he still sang songs of thanksgiving and praise to God. Mm-hmm. And that's why he was a man after God's own heart. So it was gratitude. So, oh, um, go ahead. Just some things to chew over. Then we're, we're wrapping yeah, up we're here wrapping today. Up. You know, it's funny. Um, Dad, I asked Dad <laughs> once, something we Baptists love to do is we love two things, naming buildings after ourselves. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got him. Uh, you know that's true. The Kevin B. Saul Youth Center. Your dad said we could name the gym KB Fieldhouse after me, but I, you know. Not, I want to call it the <laughs> Andy Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> so naming buildings naming after buildings ourselves. Naming buildings after and... ourselves. Um, well, three things. Food. Amen. And number three, writing books. We love writing books, right? Uh-huh. Books on any subject imaginable. But I always ask Dad, Dad, how come you've never... He's always had two main questions as a pastor, too, okay? Uh-huh. Why haven't you started a school? Yep. Which, that's a, <laughs> that's a subject for another time. Why did you hire Andy and Kevin? No. No, 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 no that's not a question. No one asks that because they just... They, 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 their, their hands are in reser- they, there's, there's no point. There's no point. Why does the sun come up in the morning? You know, you just, they don't know. But they ask him, why didn't you ever start a school? And there's a very good answer for that. We'll get that one day, maybe. Yeah. But the, numbers, the number two question, that the most repeated question that people ask Dad is, why don't you write a book? Or why haven't you? Mm-hmm. And Dad's just not into that. As in, Dad is a very unusual Baptist in a good way. We're thankful yeah. for that. No buildings are named after anyone. But... I asked Dad one day, and I said, Dad, if you were to write a book, you know, if, mm-hmm. you know, hypothetically, what would it be on? I mean, would it be, because Dad did a, th- his doctrinal thesis was on the Holy Spirit. Right. It's incredible. I thought that would be his answer. Mm-hmm. Um, he also is very proficient in Revelation, as you know. Right. He has a great Revelation series. I thought maybe it'd be something like that. And without hesitation, he looked at me and said, I would write a book on the subject of gratitude. 
Gratitude. Because he said nothing else matters except for that, for trying wow. God. And he said, if you can, he said, if I can do one thing in my 35 years of ministry mm-hmm. or in a flock, if I can instill a spirit of gratitude, he said, then I would have done my job. And he said, I know I could leave this earth knowing that God could do anything through them because mm-hmm. God can do anything with a thankful heart. But also, God can't do anything with an ungrateful heart. Interesting. I was like, wow. So, so if I had to leave a book in this world, it'd be about being thankful. So That's that should stuff. tell you a little bit. Well, catch yeah. the gratitude attitude, and happy Thanksgiving to you all next yes. week. And we're grateful for you 13 viewers out there. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> all of you. We are. We've, we've been around way longer than I thought. We're Anybody still here. Living? <laughs> You're still living. But well, we're thankful for that. As always, so, get off Facebook. Yeah. Get your face in the book. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Christmas. And we'll probably do a Christmas one or something. Yeah, probably. Maybe. maybe. Coming thank- to a pulpit near you. And I'm thankful for you. I... And I'm, I'm thankful, thankful for me too. And I'm thankful Not for this. I'm thankful for the Seminoles. Well, we have to go. <laughs> and uh, you have a fantastic day. Love you, day. Jeff. <laughs> Take we'll care. S- see you next time. <laughs>